Today we are going to talk over some news from Aurora Expeditions. We've got news from Carnival, from Holland America, a couple of milestones that they have met, as well as at least five things and maybe a six that I think you really need to know if you are going to come to England to embark on a cruise or just travel around. These are universal tips that I think will really help you. So let's go ahead and get started. Plus, I'm gonna bring you up to date on everything that we did today. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips and today is Tuesday. It is October 3rd of 2023 and I want to start off by inviting you to please subscribe to our channel. We'd love to have you with us and I think you would love to be a part of this amazing community that we have got here. So hit that subscribe button and if you appreciate my updates, would you please give this video a thumbs up? Believe it or not, that makes a difference to YouTube. So please do do that for us if you wouldn't mind. Thank you so very much. Now, first off, I thought this was so exciting because I think that there are a lot of us out there who have um, had some things on the site that we have always dreamed of getting to do. So Aurora Expeditions, they run expedition voyages to several polar locations and they have just announced that they are now going to have what they are calling a, a citizen science program. So what you can do is if you sign up and go on one of these expedition voyages, they are going to let you do some things with the scientific professionals on board so that you can help collect data. They include things like wildlife sightings and water testing, um, different things that they will let you help do, and then you can help process your results with the scientific professionals on board. And they do it in several different categories. They've got um, the options to do like with whales, with seabirds, with microplastics, with weather patterns, phytoplankton, polar fjord lands, how exciting is that? And finally, marine biodiversity. So they've got all of these different scientific projects and all this data collection that they do to help ongoing research projects. And if you wanna be a part of that, you can do that for a cruise. How exciting is that? Of all the things that you've always wanted to do and never thought you would get the chance to do, sounds like Aurora Expeditions is opening the door for some of us. Another update I wanted to let you know, and this is big news to me, finally, Holland America has announced that um, Holland America has 11 ships and they now have Starlink on half of them. So six of their ships have Starlink. So they've got it on the Koningsdam was the first ship that they got Starlink, but now they've also got it on the Oosterdam, the Volendam, the Westerdam, the Zondam, and the Zeterdam. All of those ships now have Starlink on board. I am really excited to hear how that goes. Um, I think it's a really big step up. It makes a really big difference when you are selecting a cruise and you have to have Wi-Fi when you're on it. You've either got to do work or for personal reasons, you have got Wi-Fi that has to work without fail. Starlink makes a really big difference with that. Of course, there can be outages, things can go wrong. Of course, it can slow down in some really remote areas of the world, but it makes a really huge difference. Um, it makes a really big difference. I have noticed that a lot on um, just the Princess Cruises that we have been on ever since they got Starlink. It's a game changer. One thing I do want to remind you though is when you get to some very remote places um, on the globe, it can still um, be rather daunting to try to have really good internet service. I noticed the other evening on the airplane as we were going to be flying from think of what the route would look like going from Salt Lake City over to London, you do go up and the captain said that we would have the Wi-Fi on board working, but when we got up towards Hudson Bay and then up by Greenland, that it would be very spotty as there's not near as much um, internet service up there even available. There's not as many satellites, he said. So anyway, just keep that in mind, but this is great news. Another big deal, you know, a lot of times we hear from ports that do not like cruise ships to sit there and have their engines running the whole time that they are there, you know, either to visit a port or when they are disembarking and embarking passengers, they would really like them to be able to hook up to shore power because then they're hooked up and so they don't have as much emissions coming out of a cruise ship. Well, um, the way they, they call it up, hooked up to shore power. And more and more ports are having that ability to have what you need to have to be able to hook up. 
and the goal is for more and more cruise ships to have what they need to be able to hook up to that shore power. Well, Holland America has announced that they have made it so that now all of their ships are able to hook up to shore power. So that is a huge stride in trying to make ports happy and everything as we look forward to um, sustainability theoretically and all the things that go into that, those ships now can all hook up to shore power as needed. So that's another big step forward for Holland America. I have noticed in the news that several places have reported on the fact that the CEO of Carnival Corporation, Josh Weinstein, during the earnings call was asked a question about surcharges, fuel surcharges, and the likelihood that they would charge those. And he said that he doesn't like to take anything off the table, which I think is a wise reply. But at the same time, they're not expecting those charges to come up anytime soon. I thought that was good news from the standpoint that I have wondered about them personally a lot as we have watched the price of fuel increase so much over the last um, couple of years. But at the same time, I all here in the United States at least, and I know that there has been some changes in it worldwide, but also when we think of the um, place where cruise lines are in right now, where they are trying to earn as much revenue as possible to pay back those loans that they took out during COVID. But um, anyway, I just wanted to say that I have not heard anything about them actually charging those surcharges, but they can charge them anytime that they want to. Wanted to add that. Um, I noticed, I looked through, and um, it is one thing that they reserve the right to add as a fee on a cruise, so you could have your cruise paid for and they could add that on unexpectedly. Do I think that that is, has a high likelihood? No, but I, I'm wrong about some things, you know, quite a few things quite often. So let me know what you think. Do you think that fuel surcharges are going to be coming anytime soon on any of the cruise lines? Let me know what you think. Now, I thought it would be kind of fun to tell you about some things that I think it might be handy to keep in mind if you are going to come to the um, go on a British Isles cruise, if you're going to come to visit the United Kingdom, England, um, anywhere here in the United Kingdom, whether you're coming on your own or coming before or after a cruise, just some things to keep in mind that I think might come in handy. So first of all, um, and then I'm going to tell you about our day today because we had a wonderful day today. Now, if you have not ever come, bring your umbrella. It's going to rain. It's going to rain at some point. I've been here in the fall and in the spring and in the summer and it has rained every time. I don't think I've been here in the winter yet, but I'm sure it could rain or snow. <laughs> but anyway, um, bring your umbrella with you. Bring a jacket with you that's wa waterproof that you can put the hood up. So if it's windy and rainy at the same time, you don't get soaked. Bring footwear that you can either, um, is either waterproof. Um, I always bring a, um, at least two pairs of shoes. So if one of them gets soaked, um, the next day they can be drying out while you wear the others. Um, waterproof would be optimal, but sometimes it doesn't go with what you're wearing or doesn't work out with what you've got. But for example, yesterday when we were on the Jurassic Coast, I knew my feet were going to get all of the way wet, but it was also not appropriate to wear flip-flops. And so I just knew that those shoes would get wet. So I brought shoes that that was okay with me and um, they're still drying out. <laughs> but I um, wanted to let you know, make sure that you plan on that and plan what you're going to wear as well so that it works really good for all kinds of weather while you're here because it can be beautiful and then it can be raining and not too long. The next thing I want you to know is often, and it just seems like in movies and in things that I've read, sometimes it is portrayed that British people are rather reserved. And I could see how sometimes people think that. Um, I think you could think that of a lot of different people. But my experience on this trip and on previous trips is that they are absolutely wonderful people. So if you are somewhere and you have a question about something, whether you need directions or you just want to know something, ask them. They are so kind and they love to share. Um, most overall, you know, it's the same as anywhere. Um, but they, everyone that I have spoken with here has been absolutely wonderful and so kind, so helpful, so willing to help. Another thing that I think it's really important to remember is that when you think, you know, if you fly in and you fly into Heathrow or you fly into Gatwick there, absolutely go see London. You should go see London. London is magnificent. It has its own kind of um, spectacular. There are so many things to see and do in London. Like, don't miss it. At the same time, 
go see outside of London. And you know what? I wasn't able to do it all on one trip. I've done it over several trips and there is still so much I want to see. So keep that in mind that go see London and then the next time you come, go see something else. There are still things in London that I want to see when we come back for our British Isles group cruise next June. I'm going to tuck on a day or two or come a day or two early so that we can go see a little bit more. But also outside of London is its own kind of spectacular. And it's a beautiful country and you'll love to hear it, see the differences in different areas in the country. So definitely work a little bit in as you're able and see a little bit outside of London. Even if like if you just have the chance to come one time and then you're going to go down to Southampton and get on a cruise ship, see what you can do if you have enough time that for example, you could book a tour that will take you from London and then take you over to Windsor or to Stonehenge and then down to the ship or vice versa on your way back after the ship. You can do that, but I do want to tell you, be really careful because we have Let's Go family members and they are on their British Isles cruise right now. I really appreciate them letting me know. They had booked a tour with Viator that picked them up from their hotel and was supposed to take them out to Stonehenge and then on down to the cruise ship. Well, they did that, but they did not tell them that they were also picking up from seven other hotels there in London and spent three hours doing that. So by the time they got out to Stonehenge, they didn't have time to walk out and spend as much time as they wanted. They had to take the shuttle out and have limited time, get back and then get on to get back down to the ship. So, um, really ask a lot of questions when you book a tour like that to make sure they're going to run it correctly, read every review. And I know sometimes people don't say that in the review. You can do your homework and still get stuck sometimes. But um, th that's another option to see a little bit more. So keep all of that that I just told you in mind when you're looking to do that. Another thing to remember is that there are lots of ways to get, if you fly into Gatwick or you fly into Heathrow, I have never flown into Gatwick before, but I do know that there are some airports in the United States that it's cheaper to fly from there to Gatwick. So do your homework, see where you should be flying into. But there are several ways to get down to the port in Southampton. So look at the different ways. Um, every time that we have done it, that we haven't done sightseeing first, we have always taken the Princess Transfer down. We've always done that, but there is the National Express bus. They've got train service, so if you want to go down, if you want to go to London and do sightseeing, you don't have to backtrack back to Heathrow. You can take a train that goes from there down to Southampton. Um, just lots of different options. Princess even runs a transfer that goes from central London there um, that goes down to Southampton on the day of embarkation as well. So you could use that for an option. But to kind of think outside of the box, think of the things that you would like to see, and then um, have a way to make it work. And I can help you with that if you would like. Um, another um, thing really fast, um, let's see, the last, th not the last thing, but it's really important to know that here in England, sometimes different countries, you know, they have different customs, how they hand stand handle standing in line, um, all of this kind of thing. Be aware that in England there are lines and it's really important that you stand in the line. Don't cut. Um, that's not, um, that's not smiled upon here. It's frowned upon. So when you come upon, um, whether you're entering something, whether you're waiting for tickets, whatever it is that you're doing, stand in the line because that's appropriate here because they do do lines. Um, I've told you before, when you go in Italy, then not so much lines there. If you stand there and try to be in a stand at the back of a line and think you're going to ever get to the front there, that is not the way it works. So um, there, it's not appropriate to do it here in England. Stand in the line, okay? Now, the last thing that I do want to tell you to segue into what we did today is truly the National Trust here in England is the gem of England. They are remarkable. If you don't know what the natural National Trust is, is it is a, it is a nonprofit that what they do is they take care of all of these properties in England that um, for a variety of reasons. Some of them are because the family didn't have money to take care of them anymore and they don't want to let them go into ruin. And so the National Trust buys it and takes cares, takes care of it from there on out. Um, truly, I don't know if they are um, an actual nonprofit. I don't know how those laws work here in England, but they do run off of the donations they get 
from people being members, from people paying to visit their um, properties, from people buying things at their uh, National Trust stores, from eating in their cafes. That is how they get money to take care of all of the places. So I wanted to briefly tell you really quickly our experience today, where we went to visit, and how it kind of all worked, and what you might want to think about if you're going to come to England and um, go to any of these places, because truly they represent, they are places that go clear back um, we saw part of Hadrian's Wall today. We got to see that, but also they have properties that go back. Um, I don't know what the oldest one is, but the one that we went to visit today was built in the 1700s and was amazing. Um, we went to Durham, D-Y-R-H-A-M, and um, it was absolutely beautiful. So that is where we joined the National Trust. So historically, they have the National Trust here in England and anyone can join that wants to. They also have the Royal Oak Society in the United States is how people join and support the National Trust there. And if you do it, if you're a US citizen and you join the Royal Oak Foundation, then you get that's a tax deductible donation, all right? So since we were here, so I had looked at that before, but I didn't think to look at it quickly enough before we came, and you're supposed to join and wait until they mail you like your card and your benefits that go with it. Because when you join, then you get to visit these places for free, right? And so that's a huge perk. So um, to give you an idea, I think the ones, the first one that we went to today would have been, I would think around 23 pounds a person to visit. And so, um, at the right there at that site you can at any of the sites you can join the national trust or you can join the royal oak foundation the nice gentleman that was helping us had never done a royal oak foundation membership before and i said well just do what is easier for you he's like well i don't know if you can deduct it from your taxes and i said it's okay this time. So we went ahead and joined and it was 139 pounds and 20 cents. And along with that, so for a whole year, you get admission to any of the National Trust locations in, and they have them in uh, England, in Wales, in Northern Ireland, and in Scotland. And you also get free parking. Otherwise you have to park at all of the places that you go to. And so they also are going to send us emails, but we also get this nice handy dandy. They've got maps that list all of the locations. Look at how many there are just here in England. And then they had a little map of Northern Ireland. And um, they likewise have locations in Wales and Scotland. They've also got um, this handy dandy book that lists all of the places with really helpful information if you want to visit. And then you also, every time you go to one of their places, I'm really, I don't get anything if you join the National Trust. I'm just so enamored, I have to tell you about it. Um, and if you're gonna go to very many of them, it is much cheaper to join, okay? <laughs> um, and then, so we went to Laycock also. And um, one of the fun things, I know a lot of people like to visit places where different movies or different, you know, TV shows or whatever series were for, were filmed. And so a lot of them were filmed because Laycock is not only has Laycock Abbey, but it also has um, like this whole village, a whole village that the National Trust is keeping up so that their history isn't lost. It's really very important. And I love, you know, you go to these places and you would think, well, I don't know what you'd think, but in my mind, I think, oh, there's just going to be a lot of tourists there. But there are so many British people who are loving visiting, learning more about their history and preserving their history. I think it's very important and it says a lot for who they are as a people. But um, along with that, um, what else do I want to tell you? So we went... Oh, they also have an app, according to Streamline and me. They also have the National Trust app, and you don't have to be a member to download that. So you can download it, and you can also, if you have your Google Maps up, and you, um, you know, it knows where you are, you can put National Trust in the search bar, and it'll tell you the locations around that, um, that are close to you. So it gives you an idea. They are all over the place. So we had the best time um, driving around on Sunday afternoon when we were done down by the Jurassic Coast Line Regis and down that way. We had the best time just driving around and seeing different ones. And a lot of them, like old churches, is what we saw a lot of. And you can just walk in and um, thoroughly enjoy. Some of them were closed and locked, so we didn't get to go in. But it's still beautiful to see places. So I wanted to let you know. So today we went down to Durham. Um, and it was absolutely wonderful. Was it Durham Park they called that? And oh, the other thing that you get, you don't get this, you have to pay for this, but they have these little um, National Trust Visitors Passports and you get a stamp. And so here's a heads up. So today, 
we just got our first one and we've been to national trust places before but i didn't know about this and i didn't join so you get the little stamp and they put the date on there for you but they also have different stamps for the same place at different places in the location so the first stamp i just showed you was down in their um national trust shop right down by the house there but then they also up by the parking area and their little area there which is where we joined the national trust they had a little different stamp for it and then here's the one for the laycock village so it was it just worked out really really nice all right so i wanted to tell you about that and they also had another one up at the abbey in the actual building at laycock but I didn't realize that. <laughs> so, and it was closed, close to being time to close by the time we realized. So we didn't go back and get that stamp, but just wanted to tell you that. So we thoroughly enjoyed um, getting to see that. Some of them, you can park really close to the property, but like with the Durham Park, they were really kind. They were giving rides today. They always give rides to people that um, need a little bit of help with mobility. And today it was um, a torrential downpour. So they were just giving people a ride as well because it was raining so hard. There were a few people that wanted to walk in the rain and of course they could, but it was really amazing to get to visit the areas. They have always a shop, they have a tea room. And I wanna make sure that's one thing that you know not to miss when you are in England, like pull over and eat at the tea rooms. Um, enjoy yourself, whether you're, you know, I've need, even noticed that in a lot of museums in London, they have a tea room. And when we stopped in Durham Park there, they had, um, they had a tea room and Gordon got um, chicken because it was lunchtime. He got chicken and bacon and tarragon stew. Oh my goodness. The flavors that you would have in that were like you were like, think of like Otto Lange's restaurant. Um, think of his flavors, like a masterful. It was excellent at a very nice restaurant is what you would expect. And I had a Tuscan style uh, tomato soup that was really, really exceptional, as well as absolutely delicious bread came with it. And I had a cherry and almond um, piece of cake and Gordon tried the brownie and all of it was superb. So, and it supports the National Trust. So we had a lovely lunch in the tea room. And then we went and visited the house. The church was having some construction done. So we weren't able to go in there. And so when we were all done there, then we went on to the town of Laycock that has a beautiful abbey. And then that whole um, village there that you get to see all of that. We had an amazing day Zoom, zooming around the countryside, um, going and seeing these beautiful places. It was amazing. So I just wanted to let you know, that's a really great way to see the history here in England because they have so many different things to pick from. They have just gardens, they have parks, they have old homes, they have medieval fortresses, they have castles. They just have so much to choose from that I just wanted to make you aware of that. And if you've got any questions, you can let me know. Tomorrow, um, we are going to go down to my days are messed up a little bit here uh because of the time change and having to do videos for you but on um tuesday today we're going to go down to stourhead and we're going to go see salisbury cathedral they have the originals of uh, original copy there of the magna carta and um, another place that we're going to stop and visit and then we're going to head down to southampton Southampton. We're going to stay there at the Holiday Inn. We're going to get checked in and go return our rental car. So I'll bring you up to date on that after we do it. But if you've got questions, let me know. If you have input, please put that down below for everyone here. Let them know some places that you have visited, uh, other ways to do things. Um, would love to hear from you all. Oh, and you know what? After this video, Gordon is putting the footage from today so that you can just see what it all looks like and how beautiful it was. Come along with us for a minute. beautiful this is here. Oh, and here's where we park over here.
on the terrace is the only surviving plants from the 17th century. Oh my goodness. We're going to go to the tea room. Isn't this lovely? by the nation in 1956 in memory of those who gave their lives for their country 1939 to 1945 for your tomorrow it's beautiful beautiful little courtyard wonder which door you go in where? Oh, right there. No kumquats. Oh, mint. Mm-hmm. Just a 
this must be the little courtyard. What, love? Like an orange tree over in the corner. An orange tree? Oh, let's go see the orange tree. Some kind of citrus there, huh? This way, I think. Yeah. Get the bears. On the way up, the tour guide was telling us that William Blytheway, I think is how you say his name, he married into the family here who had lots of land, but no money. And he had lots of money, but no land. So fortuitously, he married into the family and they started building and they built this beautiful home. But the interesting thing is, is that usually over time, the family redoes everything. But his family and descendants did not have the money that he had, so they didn't redo everything. So it is as it was back when it was built in the 17th century. It's absolutely beautiful.
surely had tapestries in those days. Oh, it is? Yes. It's beautiful. It's by Samuel Van Hoogstraat, who was a pupil of Rembrandt. Oh, my goodness. Globes depicting how the world was understood at the time. Right. So th there's a lot of things completely out of proportion right. in that. Is well, that the, the UK is bigger than Spain. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it's well. right. Oh, well, it's okay.
Look, you can see the Abbey over there. Where do you want to go? So I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye. Mm,